Welcome everybody back to another episode of Quick Stop Photoshop. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about another dodge and burning technique. This is the second of the three videos in this little mini series. So the first time we talked about using Photoshop's built-in native dodge and burning tool, which is very useful in a lot of cases, but there are a few cons. Number one, you can't really control your colors. You have protect tones or you don't have protect tones. Photoshop's algorithm kind of decides what to do and what that means. And number two, when you use Photoshop's built-in tool, you're kind of introducing a little bit of noise. It can make the areas that you dodge noisy. It's a little destructive on the pixels, let's put it that way. So in today's technique, we're gonna talk about using a new blank layer and we're gonna use the brush to paint in light. And when we do this technique, we can also change the blend mode or the blend type, and we can inject color into our brush so that we can control the hue and the saturation while we're dodging. Alrighty guys, let's jump into the photograph here and get started. So we've got a photo here from a beautiful waterfall in Iceland. I chose this because there's a lot of greens and it's good for this technique. So we can see here we've got our light coming in, but we wanna light up the foreground a little bit. So we could use Photoshop's native dodge and burn tool, but it's gonna kind of apply its own idea of what it thinks protect tones means. And this results in your greens being sometimes undersaturated, sometimes oversaturated, sometimes a little too blue. Maybe you wanna warm them up because the light is nice and warm from the top. So this is when this technique comes in handy, the one that we're gonna do right now. And this is actually the dodge and burning technique that I use about 97% of the time. So to start, we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna do Shift Option Command N on a Mac and Shift Control Alt N on a PC. So now we, can, we have our blank layer here. We have our blend modes. So there's a few that I like to use while I'm dodging. Mostly these two. We have Soft Light and Overlay. Soft light I generally use when I'm doing some light bleeding. It gives you a nice soft effect, but you do lose a, bit, a, little, a little bit of detail. So when I'm dodging, I'll almost always use overlay it. It maintains our detail and it makes a really nice uh, crispy dodging, light dodging for the, for the foreground and the middle ground. So I'm gonna select overlay here with our new layer and we have our brush tool. And obviously you can change your opacity by using numbers on your keypad or coming up here and dragging your opacity around. I usually start my dodging 50% or below in opacity. But before we get to that, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. We want to apply a mask. So when you do Photoshop's native dodge and burn tool, if you remember, let's click that. It's O's the quick hotkey. We have our range. We have a midtone, shadows, and highlights. So it's kind of applying its own mask. It's it's three masks, you can't really control what the masks look like. That's another upside of doing these, uh, doing this technique, is we can create our own custom masks. But we do wanna create masks nonetheless. So I usually almost always target my midtones while I'm dodging. I wanna leave my shadows dark for the contrast and I don't want my brights to get too out of control and blown out. So if you're not familiar with masks, I did make a quick luminosity mask video and I will put that flag somewhere on this video that you can click on. I would go and check that out first. But if you have watched that, then here's where it comes into handy. Or here's where it comes handy, becomes handy. All right, so we have that easy panel that I talked about downloading in that video. And this is when you're gonna use that. So if you click your easy panel, we wanna make a mid-tones mask. We have our mid-tones luminosity mask. We're gonna click that 16-bit MLMS, and we're gonna hang out here for a second while it Get your, Get your shit together. together. <clears throat> if you don't have Easy Panel yet and you do want to create these manually, once again, reference that luminosity mask video that I made where I talk about making luminosity masks by hand, but it does become cumbersome. All right, so we've generated our lu midtones luminosity masks and they put them in this folder. Nice and neat. We have one through six. Let's start at six. So we're going to look at this mask. And I'm gonna do that by holding Option and then clicking on the mask or Alt on the PC. And you can see here we get a nice selection of the grass, which is what we're gonna dodge. 
Let's check out five though. So we're gonna do the same thing with five. It targets a little bit more of the mid-tones that I'm looking for. Let's look at four. Four's looking pretty good too. So six was almost too uh, selective. It kind of selected too much in my opinion. So we're gonna do either four or a five. Now, if we wanted to make additional adjustments on these masks, we can easily do that. So let's say we go with four, but we want to make a little bit of a customization on it. We can always command L or bring up our levels on this or control L on a PC. And then you can see as I drag this around, I'm customizing my mask. So I'm bringing up my brights a little bit here. I can maybe bring down the midtones, uh, the darker sides of the midtones a little bit, so I can target my absolute midtones or my highlighted midtones a little more. What I'm looking at is the tops of these ridges where the light might be hitting, where I really want these to be white. I want this to, I want the mask to let these areas through. And you can see kind of the ridge lines of the grass here are nice and white up here as well. So let's let's go ahead and click OK. So now we have our midtones mask four. Now what we're going to do, we're going to hold option and click on this forward mask and drag it down. That makes a little duplicate copy and it's going to apply it to our new layer. So now we have our new layer and we have our nice midtones mask that we just made. So we can actually, if you want to, you can delete all these other masks because now we have the mask that we need. All right, guys. So we've got our new layer and we've got our mask that'll just target our midtones. So one more step. We're on our brush here. We're going to go up to our color tool here. If you don't have your color tool or your color selector available here as like a quick option, you can always go up to window and then come down to color. Make sure that that's selected and it's going to pop up here on your top bar and you can kind of drag it around. I do have another video that talks about setting up your side panel in Photoshop to make for the most effective or efficient uh, editing workflow. So you can check that one out as well. I'll leave a link down in the description for that video. All right, we're almost ready to go guys. So we have our brush. So we can do a couple things here. We can sample our colors in the grass and you'll see here it pulls up in the color box. So let's sample a color. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's sample a color and then let's drag this all the way up because we want to brighten this. Now we can control our saturation by going from left to right and controlling our brightness by going up and down. So I'm going to go all the way up to the top and maybe drop down the saturation a little bit. And because we do have some sunlight, this is the cool part about this. We can inject color. I'm going to actually warm this up a bit by dragging this little slider here down to more of the yellow green versus just the green. Maybe in the shadowed areas you want to cool it down, you can drag it up towards the blue-green as well. That's the cool part about this dodging technique. Let's set our opacity to 30 and let's start dodging. So because we have this targeted mask already applied with the midtones, we don't have to be super careful about where we're painting things as long as we stay on that green grass. So I'm just going to start dodging in kind of broad brush strokes. This is usually how I start kind of give myself a good template of what to follow. Um, I'm not going to get, I usually would zoom in a lot on this stuff and take my time a little bit more, but we don't want you to sit there and watch me dodge for a couple hours. Um, so I'm just going to do this in a sped up fashion here. There's a couple ways to change your brush size that are really handy while you're dodging. You can hold your fingers on control alt PC or control option on a Mac. And then while you're holding those, you can drag left to right to change the size of your brush. You can also use the square bracket keys as well, but I just don't like to reach over and do it that way. I like to kind of just drag while I'm, while I'm dodging, just hold those buttons down and drag those keys or sorry, drag that brush. All right, let's hit the top of some of these rocks here because of course we're going to have light hitting our moss on the top side of the rocks. Just kind of staying true to where light already exists in the photograph. Um, sometimes I do get a bit creative and take some creative liberties by dodging and I'll add light where there's just no light whatsoever. Um, I still feel like I am not very good at painting in convincing light that's like 100% not real, but it's a good technique to practice and a good tool or a good skill to have, I think. You can't always get perfect conditions, but you can sometimes make it seem like you did. All right, so we're just going to paint over again, zoom out a little bit, 
Let's do a before and after and see where we're at. So let's call that good. There's a before and there's an after just going over this thing very quickly. And you can see we have a nice warm look on our grass. Maybe if we did too much, we can drop our opacity down. We could always make another layer, drag our mask up to the top of that layer as well by holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and then changing this blend mode to overlay again. Maybe I wanted to warm it up even more and then hit some of these areas where the sun might be really bright, like right here along the rocks and around the waterfall and just kinda, so I did a Command Z there because I didn't like how hard I pressed down on my Wacom tablet. Yeah, I also suggest getting a Wacom tablet. This thing was like under 100 bucks. It's the Intuos Pro. Um, it's just pressure controlled. So even though my opacity is set to 30, depending how hard I press, it's anywhere from zero to 30% or whatever my max is that I set. So it's very useful. All right, guys, there's a before and there's an after. So brings the image to life. And if we had red flowers, we could switch our color to red and dodge those as well. Maybe we wanna have some parts of the grass like back here. We want some to be a little bit lighter, but they're in the shade. So we could go up to like a blue green color here. And then we could just do a little bit of dodging back here just to bring those out a little bit. And you'll see it brings it out without making it warm because it is in the shadows. And I like that cool, warm contrast in my photos. We could dodge the rocks here. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You can inject whatever colors you want. It's a pretty awesome technique. All right, guys, super quick, short and sweet video. That's gonna do it for today. I hope you found this helpful. This is one of the most utilized tools in my toolbox. Uh, I use this dodging technique the most and dodging is a very important technique to learn to bring your photograph to life. Light is everything to me. Maybe not to everyone else, but I think it is in a photograph. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll have a ton of new videos and new content coming out on a regular basis until I run out of ideas. Um, and that's why I ask for if you have an idea or something you want me to cover, please leave a comment down below in the comment section. Um, until next time, have a great weekend, a great week, good night, good morning. I don't know what time you're watching this video, but until next time, guys, see you later.